Hello, and welcome to FPGA Design for Embedded Systems. In this video, you will learn all about memories, how to create memory devices in VHDL, how to initialize a memory using a file input, and how to create a simple lookup table. Memories are a common element in most digital design systems. Earlier in this course, we described a register file circuit in which individual registers were enabled for access by decoding an address. We will extend this to include RAM and ROM memories. Register files are useful constructs that allow addressing of registers. Here we assume each flip-flop represents an n-bit wide register. Here's our entity for a dual port RAM, and here we're going to use a generic with data width equal to 8 and our address width set to 10. So in this case, our address space would be 1024 addresses of 8-bit wide data. And here's our ports for our dual port memory. Clock, write enable, D as our input, D width, that was set to 8, minus 1 down to 0. Remember our D was set to D width minus 1, which is 8, minus 1, which is 7, down to 0. Our write address and our read address, which are set as bus sizes, A width, which is 10 minus 1 down to 0, or 9 down to 0, and our Q output bus. In our architecture, we're going to create a new type. This type is going to be called RAM type of an array 0 to the power of address width minus 1 of standard logic vector data width minus 1 down to 0. So now in the future we can use this RAM type that we've declared earlier. Next we're going to create a function which will produce text output for reading values from our RAM. Here we have a file declaration of type text. We're going to open that file in read mode and it's going to be called text file. We're going to create a variable called text line, line. We're going to create a variable text bit of bit vector data width minus 1 down to 0. And our text RAM, which is of RAM type, which we declared earlier as our RAM type array. We'll create a loop of RAM type length range and go through that loop the length of the RAM. Read line, RAM file of text line, read text line of text bit, and text RAM i is equal to standard logic vector converted of each text bit and end our loop. So this function we will use for reading a text file. We're going to create a signal called RAM of RAM type previously declared, and we're going to set that equal to our function read file and we're going to read a file that we've created in our local user space called initialram.txt. So this operation will load the values in our text file through that function read file into our RAM type named RAM. We also have a signal called data reg, standard logic vector, d width minus 1 down to 0. Here we begin the process based on clock, and if rising edge clock, and if write enable equals to 1, our RAM at 2 integer unsigned write address will get set to the D value. And our data register will get set to the RAM to register unsigned of the read address. And this is a synchronous process, if rising edge clock. And at the end, we'll set our Q output equal to our data register, end process, end architecture. And here's an example with a short text file. So we've just created some random values in here and loaded it into our simulator. And here you can see the clock. And please note over here the RAM values ticking through that match the exact values in our text file. Next, we will look at generating a ROM memory. Here's our ROM. Entity ROM is 
generic data width, address width. So in this case, we've got an address width of 3. 2 to the power 3 will give us 8 addresses of 8 bits. And we've got our port declaration, clock, address, and data. Because this is a read-only memory, we will not be writing into this ROM. We are only reading from the device. Provide an address and a clock and get a data output. Here we begin our architecture, ROM architecture of ROM and some signals, ROM data and data reg of standard logic vector, data width minus 1 down to 0, and a signal address select, 2 down to 0. And we're going to begin our architecture, address select equals address, create our initial process of reading based on clock in our sensitivity list, data reg gets ROM data. And here we have our lookup process. We're going to load some values based on a case statement. So when the case of address is 0000, ROM data gets 8 bits of 100000. When our address is 001, ROM data gets AA, and so on. Now please note that when we're creating a case statement based on hand-built table, we need to declare others statement. So in this case, others, ROM data, gets zero. Why do we have to declare others? Because there are 700 other possibilities such as X, U, and after our process, we're going to set data equals data reg and end architecture. And here's a quick check of our data values at hex address 3. We can see our data value is 83. And when we look back at our address 011, we can see our value in the ROM is 83. 1000 0011. In this video, you've learned how to create a RAM and a ROM memory device, how to initialize a memory using an external text file as input, and how to create a hand-built lookup table.